Hello everyone. In today's video we're going to be doing some conservation work on a very rare antique dynamo. This dynamo was made by the Carlisle and Finch Company and that company began in around 1893. It originally started as a division of General Electric as a electric motor repair shop and it was started by two gentlemen named Robert Finch and Morton Carlisle. Uh, this company is noted as being the first company to introduce an electric train set to the market. Uh, previously there was wind-up train sets, but uh, these guys are generally credited as the first company to uh, introduce an uh, electric train set. And they actually made a water-powered dynamo uh, similar to this one. And that water-powered dynamo could be used to power one of their train sets. But this particular dynamo that we're looking at today is a number 27. And the purpose of this dynamo was to provide a spark for gasoline motors. Uh, I have a copy here of the 1900 Carlisle and Finch catalog. And at that time, this, this dynamo was made around 1899, 1900, some, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, the price of this thing at that time was about $12. And it translates to about $400 today. So this dynamo does work. Um, in case you don't know, the difference between a dynamo and an electric motor is that a dynamo can be used to create a current or it could be used to output work. Um, so if you had a gasoline uh, engine that could turn this pulley, you can get power out of these terminals. Uh, conversely, if you apply power to these terminals, it'll function as a motor. So uh, that's the uh, that's the cliff notes of the difference between a, a dynamo and an electric motor in case uh, you weren't aware of that. Anyways, this dynamo does operate when you apply about 10 volts of uh, direct current to it, <clears throat> but it does have some small problems that need to be addressed. Um, because it's so rare, this isn't the type of dynamo that you want to start repainting or anything like that. Um, but I like for all of my electric motors to function and I like them to function good. Uh, so consequently, this one's going to have to be taken apart to uh, get it dialed in perfectly. Um, first problem that this dynamo has is it's missing some thrust washers. There's a large thrust washer here. It doesn't look like it's an original one because it looks like it's too big. Um, it's, it's dangling down there way larger than it should be. Anyways, there's way too much play in this rotor here. And what's happening because there's so much play is this insulation strip right here, or the insulating ring, excuse me, uh, it's rubbing against this brush holder housing here, and that's causing this ring to wear out prematurely because it's hitting that. The one in the back, the brush ho uh, holder in the back, it's not hitting it, so we need to get these uh, brush holders realigned so that they both have the proper spacing because this one is closer to this ring than the one behind it. Another issue that the motor has is it has four of these insulating strips like you see here and uh, most of them are cracked and it's difficult to tell now whether or not they're cracked all the way through but uh, it looks like they are cracked all the way through in a couple spots um, but what I don't want to happen is I don't want the pieces that are cracked to eventually fall off and get lost so we're going to take those apart and see if we could uh, repair those uh, glue them back together so that they don't uh, fall apart over time Another issue that the uh, dynamo has is there's some wiring here that has lost its uh, original insulation and that insulation would have been like a cloth covering. Um, that doesn't prevent the dynamo from working. Like I said, it, it is working, but what's the problem is if this thing is running, you don't want these wires to be moving around and vibrating around because over time they'll start to fracture here and over here and they could eventually uh, break and then you'd have a, a much bigger problem. So we want to figure out a way just to get those uh, those wires kind of secured there so that they don't move around while the uh, dynamo is running. The other issue that's happening is the rotor, the segments uh, have some corrosion on it. So uh, that needs to be addressed. And lastly, underneath the base here, these two terminal blocks have an insulation ring like the one you see here. And one of them is uh, broken off underneath. So uh, we're going to have to come up with some kind of a replacement here because that prevents this uh, terminal block from touching the housing. So it serves an important function. 
uh, while we have this apart, we'll be taking a look at the uh, oilers and make sure that those are working correctly and that uh, it has uh, plenty of fresh oil to uh, keep it running for a long time. So anyways, this is a really uh, unique and rare piece and I hope that you're going to enjoy following along on uh, getting it back to running 100%. Okay, so as with any project, I've already gone ahead and taken a bunch of photographs of uh, this dynamo so that uh, hopefully we can get it put back together once we uh, have it taken apart. I wanted to bring the camera in a little bit closer and uh, show you what I was talking about. Um, if you look here, this brush holder is rubbing against this insulation ring. And if you look here, the one on the left has, has clearance there. So that's, that's the problem I was talking about, is this one is hitting that and wearing that ring out. Um, while we're here, you can see here where uh, this insulation is missing off these wires and it's going to need to be addressed. And also, if you look here, you can see where um, some of these insulation strips are cracked here, they're cracked here, they're cracked here, and uh, that was the part that I was saying is going to need to be repaired. Also on the top of the rotor, you can see that uh, all those segments are corroded and that's going to need to be addressed also. So uh, now that uh, you got a little bit of a closer look at that, we'll start taking this thing apart.
All right, so on the stator, all we did was just put a little bit of clear insulating varnish uh, just to give a little protection to these windings here. And I actually just kind of brushed it on uh, where these are connected here. And then every other surface just got a little bit of uh, Johnson's paste wax, nothing more than that. And the uh, purpose of the paste wax is just to help provide a little bit of uh, rust prevention in the future. So this base here, I put some paste wax on there, put a little bit of paste wax inside here, and a little bit uh, over the painted surfaces, and it's not going to get anything more than that. Okay, so all we did with the uh, base and with the two uh, end bells is we just cleaned them up and uh, we just put a little bit of uh, paste wax on them. And underneath the base, I did apply uh, one coat of uh, flat clear coat. And uh, the reason why I did that was just to provide a little bit of rust protection underneath there. And uh, you may notice on here, there is a couple set screws on this one and that one. Uh, the purpose of those set screws is to secure the uh, bushings in place but uh, I'm not going to attempt to try to get those bushings out of there so we're just going to leave the bushings and the set screws right where they're at. Alright so uh, I'm going to try a little bit of an out of the box approach to uh, repair these wires that are exposed. They're not really damaged. All I'm trying to do is prevent them from getting damaged. Uh, with repeated running of the motor. I'm just trying to keep them from vibrating around um, so that they don't fracture and break off. So normally I don't use liquid tape on uh, almost anything, uh, but in this particular case, I think this is gonna be an ideal product to use for what we're using it for. You can see I put some of it down on that wire there and uh, really looks good. You know, it's already black in color. It's a little bit shinier than the rest of the rotor, but once I coat the whole end of that rotor up with the insulating varnish, uh, those should even out and uh, hopefully that's not going to stick out so much. If it does, I'll weather it a little bit to help it blend in. So uh, I'm going to go along to these other wires here and uh, hit them with a coat of that. And you can build up that liquid electrical tape also if necessary. So like I said before, I'm only trying to keep those wires from vibrating around. It's already a black color. so. Um, that's probably the best option uh, that's available, at least in my at least in my mind. So we're gonna try it and see how it works. All right, so you can see how the first coat of the uh, liquid electrical tape looks on that wire, and uh, it really looks good. Uh, you could build this up with a couple coats, and that's what I'll do. So you gotta let it dry five to ten minutes in between. So I'll let that dry, and then I'll put another coat on there. But uh, I really think that uh, that's gonna work fantastic for what we're using it for. Okay, so the pulley for this motor has a leather ring around it, and uh, that leather ring is fairly dried out and uh, cracked up. So uh, in an attempt to preserve it, I'll just put a little bit of this Hubbard shoe grease on there. Uh, I'm a big fan of this product. It works good. It's made in the USA, and it has a nice kind of a pine tar smell to it. So uh, hopefully that'll uh, help to moisturize that leather a little bit. All right, so I'm getting ready to do a little bit of assembly work. I'm going to install the two uh, end brackets and put the rotor on there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with two thrust washers on this side and one on that side. And uh, we will adjust that as needed uh, once we test the motor out and see uh, how it's running. 
Uh, I did paint those thrust rushers black just so that they don't stick out so much. Okay, so after a little bit of uh, fooling around with the original insulation strips that were on here, uh, I've determined that I'm just going to replace them. Uh, as much as I'd like to keep it original as possible, uh, in this particular instance, that's just not going to happen. These things are so brittle and so dry rotted that um, I tried gluing them back together, but you glue them back together in one place and they just break somewhere else. And... Uh, since the primary purpose of this uh, restoration is to get this dynamo uh, functioning, I want it to run and I want it to run good. Um, with that being my number one goal, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them. And what I'm gonna use is, I went over to uh, my local big box store and in the plumbing section, they have these uh, rubber gasket sheets. And the beautiful thing about this sheet is, not only is it an eighth inch thick, which is exactly the same thickness as the original strips here, but it's also this terracotta color, which uh, is almost identical to the original color of these sheets. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, the holes on those, if you notice, they're a little bit offset, and that's how the original ones are. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just punch out the holes in there, and uh, I might just weather those just a little bit, and uh, those should be a nice uh, replacement for these and hold up for a long time. So. Uh, that's the approach we're going to take with those. Okay, so I was taking a look through my odds and ends drawers and uh, seeing what I had to come up with some replacements for a couple of these uh, missing pieces. So for the insulating washers, I found this uh, fiber washer which is almost exactly the same size that we need for a replacement. So I'll just paint that one up to match the other ones. And for the small one, I uh, have these insulating uh, electrical connectors here and I just cut off a piece of the uh, hard plastic end and it's almost exactly the same size what we need. Uh, that should work out real well. And once again, I'll just paint that one so it mimics the other ones and we should be good to go with those two pieces. Can you tell which one is the original? The one on the left is the original and the one on the right is the one that I 
mimic to look like the original. All right, so I'm at the part of the project now where I want to take a closer look at the brush housing assemblies. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the one brush housing assembly is hitting this insulating ring here. And you can see where that ring is getting chewed up. Um, prior to turning on the camera here, I went ahead and I moved one of the thrust washers from here to this side. So when I originally put this back together, I put I started out with two thrust washers here and one on the other side. But um, as I started test fitting these pieces, I decided to move one of the thrust washers to the other side. So now on the side with the commutator, I have one and on the other side, I have two. So we're going to see how uh, that works out. Now over here at these uh, brush housing assemblies, I have these two assemblies lined up. I have the holes lined up there where the carbon brushes would go in. And you can see that the uh, the one carbon brush assembly has more metal on it than the other one. It sticks out further and uh, consequently that's where that thing is rubbing. So uh, the first thing I'm going to have to do with that one is I'm going to have to put those in a vise and file the farther one down so that it matches the other one. Um, the way that these things are cast, you know, they're, it's not a precision casting. They're, they're very rough. Uh, the holes are slightly off on them. Uh, each one is a little bit different than the other one. So um, I'm going to start off doing a little bit of filing on the one and see if we can make it line up better with the second one. So this is the one that I did the metal filing on and I got that one mounted in and it seems to be fitting perfect. Uh, we have adequate space between the insulating ring and it's relatively uh, centered up on the commutator. So that one I'm going to call good. Now we're going to go ahead and try to fit the other side. I also filed off some material off the face of this uh, housing area right here and then I used the uh, chemical darkener and I just darkened that in to uh, match what was there before so um, I was trying to even out the spacing between uh, this face and the commutator uh, compared to the other one so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together now and uh, take a look and see where we're at okay so I'm gonna call that good uh, there's a little bit more space between the left one uh, and the insulating ring as compared to the right but uh, I don't want to file off excessive material off that if I don't have to so uh, that's going to get the job done and it's still a heck of a lot better than it was before so uh, we're just going to leave that be Okay, so I went ahead and I replaced these two wires right here. They go from the uh, brush housing assembly to the uh, field coil. And uh, the reason why I switched those out is because the two that were on there were replacements. 
the two that were on there, they were pretty old, but they were rubberized, and the originals that would have been on here would have been a cloth wire. So um, I have some reproduction cloth wire. So uh, I went ahead and I switched those out. And now what I'm doing is I'm using these uh, weathering chalks and I'm weathering those so that they don't look new. And while I'm in the process of weathering things, I went ahead and I weathered these uh, insulation strips that uh, we replaced. And uh, you definitely can't tell that those are uh, replacements on there. They look just like the originals. Same thing with these discs down here the replacement ones I'm just weathering everything uh, I'm also gonna weather these uh, windings and you know I want the I want the motor to look just like it did before I started here so uh, hopefully when I'm finished this uh, restoration is gonna be kind of an invisible restoration uh, the last thing that I did was I was doing a little bit of uh, trial and error with the uh, the thrust washers I was running the motor with one two three just trying out and seeing which way that the uh, motor runs the best and uh, I didn't really have anything to go off of because the originals were missing out of here so I've come to the conclusion that two thrust washers here and none up front seems to give me the smoothest uh, running motor um, originally I had put two here and one up there and then I switched it out and uh, now I'm back to having two here but none up front so anyways, uh, this rotor does have a slight wobble to it when it runs. It's just the way that the, it's built. Uh, these weren't built, you know, with precision in mind. Um, but it runs really nice now. So anyways, I'm just going to finish uh, weathering this up. And then uh, the next step is we're going to go ahead and get this mounted uh, on a wooden base and uh, get a switch wired up to it. So that's going to be the next step. Okay, so I have some walnut lumber and uh, I'm in the process of making a wooden base for the motor to sit on. And uh, I've already cut this to the uh, dimensions that we need. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, route the edges on that on this uh, router. And, that, and then I'll put a little bit of linseed oil on there and uh, we'll be ready to mount the motor on there. All right, so we got the uh, base oiled up with the linseed oil, and it looks real nice. And uh, I was taking a look around, and I have this little uh, Frankenstein-style uh, knife switch in my uh, spare parts collection, so I think I'm going to utilize that uh, as a switch for this motor. So what I've done here is I've just taken some solder, and I soldered on a couple spade connectors, and uh, I'll run those wires from uh, underneath here to these terminals, and then just run them out to the switch there. So um, I think that'll look uh, that'll look pretty nice with that combination of the knife switch and the uh, motor together. Okay, so right now I have the dynamo running on about two and a half volts, and uh, as you can see, it runs uh, quite contently over there. So uh, we'll go ahead and boost it up to five volts. That's running uh, at 5 volts there. Dynamo came out real nice. I mean, it really runs nice and smooth. Uh, the rotor itself does have a slight wobble to it, but that's just the way that it was manufactured. It's, uh, it's not that we can do about that, but it does run uh, as smooth as it ever has. Now I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to 10 volts. And as a dynamo, this is actually uh, what it's rated for, uh, 1200 RPMs and 10 volts. And there you have it, Carlisle and Finch, number 27 dynamo. Alright, so now this project is finished, and I couldn't be happier with the way that it turned out. It looks good, and it functions good, and that's always the end game. In this video, we tried to do a conservation more so than a restoration, uh, what I like to think of as an invisible restoration. Any repairs that I did here, I actually went behind and I weathered them so that when we were finished, 
the end result doesn't look much different than when we started, other than the fact that I mounted it on a piece of wood and I added a switch to it. Um, these Carlisle and Finch Dynamos are pretty rare and they're highly sought after by collectors and uh, I feel good knowing that this Dynamo is going to be in solid running condition for many years to come. So I hope that you enjoyed following along on this project and we look forward to making the next video. Thank you very much for watching.